Every day, nearly half of all public school students in the country ride a big yellow bus to school. It's a huge operation that provides a service bigger than all other U.S. transit systems combined. The current system provides a much-valued, safe service for our children. And, like the plumbing in our homes and other infrastructure, we rarely discuss it until it breaks. Fundamentally, the school bus gets kids to school. If students can't get there safely and on time, it impacts their learning and impedes schools delivering on their core mission. Despite its importance, school transportation looks largely the same as it did 50 years ago, even as 21st century schools and districts continue to change. School districts already spend a significant percentage of their budgets on transportation, and those costs continue to rise, forcing a choice between funding teachers, materials, and other instructional resources, and upgrading the bus service. Layers of regulation also restrict schools' flexibility to balance quality, efficiency, and cost. Facing unusually high cost pressures at $110 million, Boston Public Schools recently issued a public challenge to help it navigate the complex transportation needs of its students and schools. It's not just big urban districts that struggle. Rural schools often run half-empty buses across huge geographies, with long ride times for kids, wear and tear on buses, and high costs per student. Growth in school choice options also present transportation challenges. In some places, like Denver, where many students attend schools outside their neighborhood, at least some service is provided. But in many places, school transportation fails students who need to cross town for school. If families can't get kids to their preferred school, is it a real choice? And school transportation lags behind in environmental technology. In 2014, only 6% of new school buses in the U.S. and Canada ran on alternative fuels. Compare that to over a third of mass transit buses in the U.S. using alternative fuels or hybrid technology. Clearly, modernizing school transportation isn't easy. There's no magic wand to reconcile balancing optimal safety, efficiency, cost, and protections for students' special needs. So where do the solutions lie? Improving data and technology could modernize the buses themselves and help districts better understand how students and families use these systems. Combining better information with more design flexibility would allow schools to tailor systems to local needs. Another idea is for states to provide financial incentives for smart design and investments. This could drive improved service, lower costs over the long term, plus environmental benefits. Finally, broadening thinking on how school transportation intersects with other transportation systems could spur new avenues for local and regional cooperation and collaboration. We must think bigger about the school bus problem, starting now.